Ready for part two? So we'll finish this up. So part two, we're going to just go through the functional group. So I picked up here with R notation. So R just means the rest of the molecule, so we're not interested. All right, so here's some important functional groups in organic chemistry. And again, you guys are going to get fascinated. You're going to change your major to chem, and then you'll learn all about how these different things react. All right? So alcohols have an OH, and all alcohols rhyme with alcohol. So there are OH. Don't confuse this with the hydroxide ion. That's an ion. That's inorganic. But if it has an OH sticking off of a carbon, so R means a carbon-containing group, okay, then it's an alcohol. So these are, for example, this is 2-propanol or propan-2-ol, butan-2-ol, pent-3-ol. Okay? So by the way, if you're curious, pro means 3-carbon, Bute means four carbon, then it goes pent hex hept, right? Three is the number, so carbon one, carbon two, carbon three. Again, we're not doing nomenclature, but these are all alcohols. All alcohols have similar chemistry. They're, they form hydrogen bonds because there's no H, for example. They're not identical chemistry, but they're very similar chemistry. Again, what I want you guys to be able to do is just recognize functional groups, like is this an alcohol, is this whatever it is, right? Okay, some other ones, aldehydes and ketones. So a carbon-oxygen double bond is called a carbonyl, C-A-R-B-O-N-Y-L. An aldehyde, it's a carbon and then a carbon-oxygen -ox carbon double bond and a hydrogen. And a ketone just means that the carbon that has the oxygen has two carbons. R and R prime just mean that they can be different R groups. They could be the same R group as well. So just some examples, okay? This is formaldehyde. This is a preservative that used to be used. It's not used as much because it's extremely volatile. Volatile, remember, means it turns into a gas at a low temperature. Okay, but this is an example of an aldehyde. So it's carbon with a hydrogen. Okay, this is acetone. You can buy acetone. It's common use in nail polish, nail polish remover. Okay, so acetone. So you see the difference? Hydrogen, and if this was a carbon here, you'd still have... Um, but as long as there's one H, it's an aldehyde. But if there's two carbons, it's a ketone. Okay. Carboxylic acids. So we talked about acids before. So these are organic acids. All of these are weak acids. Okay. So it's similar to uh, an aldehyde and a ketone in that there's a carbon and then a carbon off carbon oxygen double bond. The difference is there's an alcohol. Now this is not an alcohol. It's an OH. If this was just a carbon OH, it's an alcohol. But this is a carbonyl OH. So a carbon oxygen double bond with an OH is a carboxylic acid. Again, if you cover this up, if this is a, just the hydrogen, it's an aldehyde. If this is a carbon, it's a ketone. If this is, doesn't have the oxygen, it's an alcohol. So it's carbon oxygen double bond and an OH that makes it a carboxylic acid. And it's an acid that does acid stuff. Acids typically have sour flavors in foods. Okay, this is citric acid. You may have heard of the citric acid cycle. This is an acid that's found in citric, citrus fruits, oranges, lemons, things like that. And this has three alcohol, three carboxyl, carboxylic acid functional groups. One, two, three. Okay, see so if you can guess what's this one. Very good. That's a, that's an alcohol. So this has an alcohol and then three carboxyls. This is acetic acid. This is the acid in vinegar, right? So again, that's that, that's an example of a carboxylic acid. Okay, amines are bases. They're the bases of organic chemistry. Amines have kind of a fishy, icky, smelly odor. This is what makes fish smell. So the best way to keep fish from smelling is cut off their noses. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but some interesting stuff about amine. So anything that has an amine, this is an R, right, carbon, and then it has a nitrogen with, can have two hydrogens, it can have one hydrogen and another carbon, but it's a nitrogen functional group. Okay, so R, N, H. Okay, interestingly, these are bases. And these tend to be not very water soluble. Fish oils are not very water soluble, depending on how long the R chain is. Now, when you cook fish, um, one of the things that people do to get rid of the fishy odors, they put lemon juice on it. Lemon juice has this acid. 
So what do acids do to bases? This is a review. Acid-base chemistry is protons go from an acid to a base. So if I had an acid and I put it on this base, I get this. This is charged, so this is going to be much more water-soluble. So if you take lemon juice and you put it on fish, what it does is it adds a proton to the fish oil, makes it more water-soluble, so it tends to wash off of the fish and gets rid of some of that fishy odor. All right? There's also the, the whole idea behind a, a, a lot of... A lot of amine compounds can be purified by doing this as well. Right? But this is what amines do. And they all have kind of a weird, icky smell. Okay, esters have pretty smells. So esters are used in flavoring, they're used in perfumes, things like that. Now, what's interesting about this, so this, if this was a hydrogen, this would be an acid, right? But what you do is you add, have a carbon. So it's kind of like a carboxylic acid, but instead of having a hydrogen, it has another carbon group. And these just have pretty odors, pretty smells. Okay. A lot of perfumes can be actually isolated from the from the flower, or they can be made in the lab. And same with flavoring, artificial flavoring. Uh, a lot of times you can use the natural flavor. So vanilla, for example, I think it's vanilla in here. Uh, we don't have the vanilla one. But you can make these in the lab and put them in food, or you can actually isolate. So you could isolate this from raspberries, or you could actually make it in the lab and put it in something to give it a raspberry flavoring. It's literally the same molecule that's in the raspberry. But these are just some examples. So you can see here is right here is the ester. Here's the ester. Here's the ester. Here's the ester. See the ester? Ester. Ester. And this is an alcohol. Okay. Ester. Okay. This has an ester. And this has a weird bridgehead. It's called a bridgehead. All right. So uh, our artificial flavors are natural flavors. Um, different from each other? Absolutely. It, it kind of depends on how it's purified, but the difference is the molecule that gives it the flavor will be the same, but if it's purified from the plant, it may have other plant stuff in it depending on the purification process. If this is made in a lab, it's probably more pure than the natural flavor, but the natural flavor is going to have other stuff that may or may not be important. So, it, you know, people get hung up on natural versus made in a lab. And if it's the same molecule, it just kind of depends. We can have a whole discussion another time. Maybe we'll, you know, not in this class, but you know, we talk about natural medicines are kind of an interesting thing. But this is what esters are. So esters, again, they have that functional group, and you can recognize it right there. All right, the last part of organic chemistry is very interesting. So we did this with Lewis dot structure with 3D structure, and there are what are called stereoisomers. So stereoisomers are non-superimposable mirror images of each other. So remember, an isomer is the same molecule. Iso means same. Same molecule, but different arrangements. So we saw cis-trans isomers going back a few slides. Let's go back to those real quick. There, whoops, too far. Right? This is the same molecule, but it's a different arrangement, so it's an isomer. Same number of carbons and hydrogens and things. Um, now, this is very interesting, though, because if you look at these, if you imagine this being a mirror, if you picked this up and tried to superimpose it on here, so you pick it up, so you put this group, this two-carbon group here, you'd see that the hydrogen and the bromine weren't, wouldn't line up. So these are non-superimposable mirror images. This is also called chirality, C-H-I-R-A-L-I-T-Y, which is handedness. So if you right now do this, take your hands, Hold up your left hand and your right hand, and you see that if you superimpose them, so you put the, the palm side in the same place, your thumbs are on opposite sides. If you put them so the thumbs and the fingers line up, but now you've got the palm on the top and the palm on the bottom. So those are what are called non-superimposable mirror images, or stereoisomers. And it's really important because a lot of molecules have handedness or chirality. And that is going to be really important biochemically because in biochemistry, there's a lot of binding events where one molecule binds to another. When I talked about viruses a little bit a long time ago, I explained that. Um, and you can see, if you look at this example, stereospecificity means a binding site is specific to only one stereoisomer. So if you look at these two, these are non-superimposable mirror images of each other. R and S, it's like right-handed and left-handed. Those are just notations. All right, I got a trick-or-treater here. 
So if you look at this, you see that this binds, but this wouldn't bind to the same binding site. And that's really important because this would be biologically active and this might not. All right, so that's something we'll talk about a little bit more later. So I'm going to end this right here. And that will be it for this set of slides. You should be able to do the homework over this material.